Good evening, my name is Shelly McKinnon. I have four school-aged children in the Boise District, the oldest of whom will be a freshman during the 2012-2013 school year when the proposed legislation will begin to go into effect. These proposals will have a direct effect on my family and my children's educational experience. 21 days ago, when Idaho's proposed plan was unveiled, I was stunned. I have struggled to understand how this could possibly be a good fit for Idaho and our students. Reasons given by those who formulated the plan include the success of similar plans in other states, citing Maine as one of the most successful. This is misleading because it's an apples to oranges comparison. The difference between Idaho's proposed plan and Maine's actual plan are critical. Maine's one-to-one -one laptop initiative program was a result of a budget surplus. They created a $50 million endowment from one-time tobacco settlement funds. It's an on-site enrichment-based program, excuse me, which means technology is a tool that enriches classroom learning with the direction of a teacher. Idaho's proposed plan is actually come as a result of a budget deficit and is a replacement-based plan where in order to pay for the technology, it is cutting teachers out of the system. Maine recognizes in its task force report that the human resource in the classroom is as critical as the technological resource. Maine's task force was comprised of 18 members. It took them eight meetings over four months to do thorough research, including an educational needs analysis to come up with their surplus budget plan that has led to their enrichment success. Where is our collaborative committee? And where is our Idaho specific research? Another crucial component to Maine's plan that is missing from the proposed Idaho plan is local choice. In Maine, the local school districts choose whether to opt in and participate. There is also no mandatory online component in their plan. Here's where we need to be asking the right questions. Maine has been successful because they were doing an educational plan of enrichment by doing more with more. Idaho's budget-driven business plan is proposing to do more with less, both monetarily and in terms of human resources. How then can we possibly assume that the outcomes would be the same? It's a mistake to believe that this type of plan can be successful when it limits, as in the case of online classes, mandatory. It limits our students' face-to-face -face access with the most crucial component of their success, teachers. In conclusion, this evening is about getting information and sharing ideas. We do not expect everyone to adopt the exact same view or response to this information. We do all live in a great state in an amazing country where we have the chance to be heard, whatever our position. We encourage you to look at the direct impact to you from these proposals and come up with a response and contact your representatives and senators. There's a lovely handout right here. If you don't happen to know what district you're in, list of what school, what district your school happens to be in, as well as the Senate Education Committee and House Education Committees. And on the bottom, there are details for you to take home on how to testify during the Session Education Committee hearing next week. Parent testimony will be vital in this process. Remember, please, to keep all responses respectful. A well-stated, constructive response will be taken more seriously than any bashing or mudslinging. Many could not join us tonight. So please share this information with them and with anyone else across our state. Additionally, one week from today, on February 8th, there will be a town hall meeting located at Maple Grove Elementary School beginning at 7 p.m. Please consider attending. Let's be heard. We need to do this for our kids. Thank you, parents, legislators, school district administrators, and school board trustees for joining us this evening.